This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Da na na da da. No. Y'all, no. y'all, just this stop. This is a sham. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. Erica just gave me some news that I don't even know if I could do the show anymore. <laughs> No. I, I can't tell. It's an inside <laughs> secret, but it does have to do with our very first story. Okay. So Justin Bieber put the pieces together. <laughs> uh, is apparently still very worried after Haley's recent health scare. So according to People Magazine, Justin is having a hard time sleeping after Haley suffered a blood clot to her brain last week. She did recover, but Justin reportedly was terrified for her and stays up watching her while she rests. So obviously it has nothing to do with the, with the health scare or anything like that. A little inside, Justin Bieber's coming to Denver tomorrow, and I'm going. Okay, oh, so that's, okay. that's, the, that's the inside nice. scoop. But let's get back, because I don't want this affecting his performance, so we want to make sure Haley is A-OK. -okay. Yes. What is going on? Yeah. It's, Lately, it seems like all these young people are, like, succumbing to these mysterious, like, crazy things. What is happening? I know. And what's really scary is if uh, my mom's had strokes before, and if you ever are witnessing someone with, it's, it wasn't a stroke, but it was a blood clot, so it was really close. It is really, really terrifying because you end up start speaking gibberish. So it's like, and it's like, what? And so it's really traumatizing for Justin to have hurt Haley to start speaking nothing, and, like, half the face can sometimes go away. So really, if you hear a partner or a friend start speaking in that way, get them to a hospital immediately. It is an emergency. So very, very scary stuff. And there's nothing you could do really to prevent or find out if Never you have know. a blood right. clot, right? right? One of my best friends from college, not just to share like a little personal story, like that, I called him one weekend and he didn't answer. I'm like, hey buddy, I'm gonna be in the city. I'm gonna come um, stay at your house. And his mom called me back and he passed away that morning like that. Yeah. Just yeah. like, it's I mean, I had talked to him the day before. Yeah. And then like that, he yeah. passed away from um, a blood clot. Yeah. And it's like, you, you don't, and it scared me because this was in college and it, you don't know how to, how to fight that. How, right. do you, how do you know? Right? I think it's really important, especially, I mean, obviously, when people are older in age, you know, you have things that you're like on the lookout for. But I think a lot of times, especially with younger people, we're just like, we'll drink some water and sleep it off. Yeah, especially you know? like, yeah, that young. And if you don't take it seriously, like I, um, it, another thing is when people have like panic attacks. Sure. So they put me through a whole thing where they were checking to make sure it wasn't a stroke. Like hands up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was taking it, well, I was taking it very seriously because it's just very scary, but I was just thinking if I were to have been by myself and Anthony wouldn't have been with me, I probably would have just gotten in bed and tried to like sleep, sleep it, it off. off. Right. Absolutely. Um, so just, you know, you got to take these things seriously. And also really quickly, you have to have health insurance as well. When you don't have health insurance, you don't go to the hospital. You don't, you to, don't right? even tell anybody. You're more apt to take some water and try and sleep it off because you're just like, I literally cannot go to the hospital. So mm -hmm. that's another thing where like any kind of coverage you can get is better than none. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And Justin, if you want to stop by the house, I will watch you sleep. I mean, I will help you watch Haley sleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very creepy. All right, so <laughs> we are getting another look at the new Kardashian <laughs> reality show coming to Hulu. Speaking <laughs> of watching really? people sleep. Yes. Next month, it features some insights into Kim and Kanye's messy divorce. Let's watch. It is really hard with Kanye. He told me my career is over. Why are we always making excuses for the yeah. people that traumatize us? I'm out. This is so oh ridiculous. We have all the time and all of the resources to burn them all to the ground. Never go against the family. Never go against the family. Mm. That was a pretty good tease, but it also shows that Courtney and Travis are trying to have a baby as well. So some good news. Some in there. good news too, and just an update on that. Um, there's been a recent clip that came out, and Courtney spoke about the IVF journey, and it's apparently not going so great. She's been getting a lot of hate about some weight gain and some comments. So it's been a really big struggle for them, and they desperately want one. So she added that, and that does make her to me a bit more relatable in that sense. I, I do want to say this. I feel like as a show, we have absolutely failed because we do not have. Never go against the family tattooed somewhere on, <laughs> all, on every host. It should be somewhere on our back What's or somewhere. To be, That'd be so cool. Well, that's not even their line. It's, a yeah. it's from the Godfather. Saying, but you like, know what I mean? So they that. stole it. They stole right, it. Right, yes. right. I am just, um, you know, really counting my blessings because I definitely needed another avenue to hear more about Kim and Kanye's messy <laughs> divorce. Yeah, yeah, we did. 
win. I, we I just, we you do. know. Are you being sarcastic? Of course. This is super interesting. I Erica, agree. I it agree. is content. You Game of Thrones ran out of stuff to do seven seasons in. They were in Starbucks cups everywhere. <laughs> These people have for decades Real now drama. given us content. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested, but hey, a lot of people are. You got to give it up to that. It's been decades. At one point, she's texting someone on the camera and they go, who are you texting, Kim? And he goes, no one. And she goes, does it rhyme with feet? And she's like, uh -huh. and so we see Pete and her relationship on screen blossom. And I'm all for that. Wow, I'm surprised they put that on camera. Yes. But again, they put everything on camera, right? They don't hide very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One other question I did have, and I don't even know if this is the right time to ask it. What happened with the relationship with E? Does Hulu somehow own E, or is there a bad breakup with the Kardashians being on that long to move their platform? I think they just wanted another outlet. I knew it ended. Their what do you mean ended. another outlet? I mean, that's a relationship that they had for decades, I right? Feel like there e must have been something bad that out. nobody's talking about. Yeah. I, don't I know. thought it was like a mutual party. It seemed like E's trying to figure out what mutual. they want to do. Mutual. E, if you were E, would you let them go? If I was trying to rebrand, which I always feel like E's doing every four years, so I don't know. Is that a shot at them? I don't know. I what do they let do? them go. I don't, I don't even know the answer. E's I just great to me. I just, you know, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Apparently none of us do. Great question. Okay, so Nicolas Cage, speaking of no one knows what he's doing, <laughs> has a new movie. It scored a perfect 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, but stick around. So far in the film, Nick plays a version of himself who is broke, so he accepts $1 million to attend the birthday party of a wealthy but dangerous super fan. Let's watch. Nick Cage. God, this place is stunning. What is your favorite movie? That's one of those questions that's impossible to answer. You can't just limit it to one. Imagine me and you, I do. Is it too much? Okay. Is this supposed to be me? It's grotesque. I'll give you 20,000 for it. So one of the 15 reviews, hence the 100%, oh. posted on Rotten Tomatoes, calls the film, quote, the Bellagio buffet of Nicolas Cage movies. It's pretty funny and kind of dumb. <laughs> I gotta be honest, <laughs> I kind of liked it when I saw it. I thought it, looks, it looks like it was shot really well. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. He's kind of playing, he's almost doing what Kenny G does, which is kind of steer into the like, old people think I'm corny thing. He's like, look, I'm playing Nick Cage in a Nick Cage movie, making fun of myself for making bad movies, making bad purchases like that statue. First of all, that was from Face Off, and that movie's amazing. Yeah, I, look, I'm a Nick Cage fan. Shout out Con Air. I'm just saying, look, yeah. make fun of him now. So it's like, it's interesting that he's kind of at that point in his career where he's kind of acknowledging and moving forward. It's meta. Mm. That's what's so in now. It's I meta. Would watch it. I'm in on the joke. That's the whole thing. And Nick Cage is like a character of himself. So he's just using it. It's a brilliant idea. It's very being John Malkovich in a weird way. And I think it'll do super well. And I, and I haven't seen Nick Cage in a while. So it'd like, be nice to see. I that. like your comparison rather than the Kenny G comparison. <laughs> well, Kenny G does that. He's like, I know people make fun of me from playing the, the instrument and like kind of that being soft elevator jazz. So he kind of like plays around with it. I like that. Michael Bolton does too. Are you into this, Erica? I just want to know, is that $1 million story to go to the um, birthday guy's party? birthday party? Is that a true story? A very dangerous, it happens with celebrities. Well, they no, get I'm, like, I'm wondering, so that's what I would find to be the most interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, that like, I'm not doing anything wrong, but I don't know where this money came from type thing. <laughs> Which that happens. That scenario is interesting. Mitzvahs, they'll yeah. spend $3 million and have Drake come in. Well, Ooh. I'm talking about like Saudi heiresses that, might have killed people, not Drake. <laughs> he raps about people, but yeah, different things. Coming up on DBL, mentalist Wayne Hoffman, he's back with more unbelievable, unbelievable tricks for us. You don't want to miss it. And a new twist from the Netflix show Inventing Anna. Did Aaron Anna Sorkin <laughs> evade her deportation? Closed captioning provided by... When we... Okay. All right, we're going to name our favorite Nick Cage movies, and we're going to go around and ask. So, Al, what's your favorite? Mine is, uh, and it's one I, uh, I really like. It. It's the one where he put on a bunch of muscle to do. He's played like a strip club's owner's son. Jeff will know. Jeff, I'm sorry. So, hold on. we got to find this uh, out. I have to find it. it was, Nick? David, do you know what I'm talking about? It's like, not the Long Kiss Goodnight, but it was like a movie from the late 90s. Really? Yeah. I really liked He played like a... Go, Con Air. No. Um, 
Oh, National Treasure. I no. forgot about National oh, Treasure. Are, are those, are those your favorite, Tori? Oh, is now, of course. Oh, I love them. Oh, they're so good. I'm going to steal yeah, the Declaration of Independence. Jeff, what was the movie he did where he played like a strip club owner's son and he put on a bunch of muscle for the role? Nick Cage did. I feel like you made this up in a dream. No, I've watched it a bunch of times. He puts on the muscle for Con Air. It came on like, Frozen Ground. Stuff. Chris, how do you not know this? You know what I'm talking about? Raising yeah, Arizona. Yeah, he, like a suit in it yeah he was like a, a, yeah, like a, Arizona like was a, a dumb, good one. like a dumb kind of bouncer, that. tough guy. Oh, I don't remember that. It was like in eight the millimeter. No, that adaptation. Was, that might be one of my favorite eight millimeter. Adaptation was really. We're good. going to find this. Did anybody like The Wicker Man? I don't remember. No, that. I didn't. Like his older movies like Wild at Heart. Um, I know this I like The Rock. Welcome to The Rock. Oh, that's a good one. That's a I great one. I need to one. know the name of I just, the movie. I just wanted to know if you liked your haircut. What's that? The Kiss of Death? The Kiss of Death. That's oh. it. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Watch Kiss did of Death. Did you see Wild at Heart? No. I did never saw Wild at Heart. I saw Raising Arizona, I don't know which why is very Nick Cage, He's made some good movies. Face Off is great. Is great. <laughs> Face Off Pigeons. Horrible. He was in The Dust. Rock. Stupidest he movie He was in The I've Rock. Fast Times at Richmond High. He was in Fast Times. Uh, Con Air I never saw. Raising Arizona, one of my favorite. That might be my favorite. I just want a baby. I just want a baby. Uh, Raising Arizona is a good one. Too. Raising great. Arizona was great. It's, fun. it's old. Oh, I what's the one um, in Las Vegas? Leaving Las, Leaving Vegas? Las Vegas? Oh, That was yes. an ex where he was dying. That might be a drunk. Who's drinking your stuff? Yeah. I can't get this um, Welcome back. The fake German heiress who scammed her way into New York's elite society is still in the U.S. after a deportation mix-up. How does this happen? Aaron Sorkin, who also... I'm sorry. Anna Sorkin, who also went by Anna Delvey. Too much entertainment for me. Conned her way to hundreds of thousands of dollars and is now the subject of the Netflix series Inventing Anna. Let's take a look. Hi, Anna. I just had some questions. I have a question. What are you wearing? You look poor. She has everything that is wrong with America right now. I am famous. People are painting a public picture of me as a criminal. That's not my story. And what is your story? Great show. Anna is played by actress Julia Garner, who does a spot on impression of her as well. Anna, who was known for wearing designer outfits during her trial, was supposed to be on her way to Germany. But according to some reports, her lawyers appealed her deportation. She's still being held at a detention center in New York. Anna is also set to appear on a podcast tonight in a video recording interview from the ICE facility. I still follow Anna on Instagram. Now. I think a lot of people do. She's like still going. What? Yeah. How? She's in. She she has access a, to a lot of the, uh, reporters and other things, and she reportedly can have friends that can put out her Instagram. It's crazy. Did you watch the series? Nice. Have you watched the series? <laughs> What's that? Have you watched the series yet? I tried yet? to get through it. The first half hour, I was like, this is, I care about myself too much. Can I stop uh, watching no, it? No, you it's good. So, it. Is it good? Yeah, yes. It's Shonda yes. Because here's something that we aren't addressing is she is actually very, um, like, she's a brilliant person. Like, photographic memory. She's, wow. like, top tier mind-boggling in, in intellectual. So I think that when we're having this conversation, it's like one thing to be like, oh yeah, she's just a girl who knew how to dress no. up for Instagram. Like, nah, she, she knew. She how to play the game. And here's the question too. If you have that type of intellect, what would have been possible if she used her powers for good? But I think like, that's that's the thing. It's like you think the, the weird thing with genius, and we we talked about this with with Kanye, obviously. But just genius, it can either go the the same brain that can invent like a, a jet engine can also be the Unabomber who went to Harvard. Right. It's the same brain, the same makeup. It's just like one little thing off and here we go, but you're right, she is brilliant. My question to you guys is like, are we starting to kind of glorify these swindlers, especially when they're attractive? You look at like the Tinder, the Tinder swindler, good looking guy, was a womanizer, but like he doesn't get that rap because he's a good looking guy. But it's like, uh, you he know. He doesn't? 
as a womanizer, he got a gig with Cameo. Like, he's a legit Yeah, but that show came now. out and showed him for who he was. I mean, that was a show to protect other women because he was, like, <laughs> dreadful on that. And they, the women I, I really think came he, out on I top I think he looked one. okay coming out of there. He looked like he lived a Playboy well, lifestyle, which a lot of people would want. Well, to, to your point, Anna, you follow her on Instagram. Yeah. She is a swindler yeah. in her own right, right? Oh, absolutely. But you're right. There's a part in the movie or series where they hand her someone to read, and she goes like this. Okay. And she has an eidetic memory. She's memorized it immediately, I all of that. Yeah. And you're right, the potential there oh, right. is unbelievable. And she but had a great idea for the foundation. I say this a lot, but it also, I think, is what happens when you've seen she's the wizard. Scared. There's no more wizard. There's no more mystery. Mm. There's no more anything. So, like, like it's almost well. like you're so bored. Yeah, like you're, like, creating yeah. your own things because the real world just isn't fun enough. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Do you want to do a little Anna Delvey before we I go? don't know what you mean. You look paw. That wasn't you bad. Look pa. I don't know if she was yelling, pa. but I like that. You look pa. You pa? Pa. <laughs> <laughs> they did it on SNL, like a joke, a sketch on Anna Delvey, and I'm like, once you've hit SNL satire, I mean, like, she's you made a famous it. person. Yeah. Her show's like number one on Netflix, or it was for a while. Yeah. Coming up on DBL, friend of the show Wayne Hoffman has more tricks up his sleeve for us. What illusions will he pull off this time, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> this. Social media is full of opinions and hot takes, but we verify so that we could stick just to the facts. Right now, there's a lot of talk about how much gas and oil is produced in the U.S. Biden critics are quick to write things like this. Biden needs to unleash American energy production, while Jen Psaki, his press secretary, argues that U.S. production of natural gas and oil is rising and approaching record levels. So let's verify, how much gas and oil do we produce in the U.S., and how does it compare to past years? Our sources are the Energy Information Administration and a pair of energy experts, Mark Finley from Rice University and Robert Weiner from the George Washington University. So let's get to the data. The EIA has this graph showing yearly crude oil production in the U.S. I mean, you'll see that U.S oil production peaked in the around 1970. Our two experts walked us through the data, pointing out that for some 30 years between the 70s and the 2000s, U.S. production was dropping. The United States was in steady decline because basically been drilled out. Our experts say that this all changed in the mid-2000s due to the so-called shale revolution. Techniques like hydraulic fracturing or fracking caused a huge spike in production of oil in the U.S. That shale revolution took place across successive administrations of both Democrats and Republicans. So let's get to the latest numbers. In 2021, there were over 4 billion, 82 million barrels produced in the U.S. That's only lower than 2020 and the peak in 2019. Weiner says the decrease over the last two years was due to the global pandemic. With demand way down, production needed to go down also. So the oil companies produced less. They were very unprofitable. So we could verify that the U.S. production of oil and gas is down from 2019, but it's far greater than it's been for nearly all of American history. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozloff. Welcome back to DBL. The unbelievable tricks from mentalist and illusionist Wayne Hoffman always blows our minds. So take a look at some new ones he shared with us earlier. You'll be amazed. Wayne, we're so happy to have you back. Um, okay, so what do you have in store for us first? I want to try a little experiment, and uh, I want to try this with uh, Jeff, if you're if you're willing to participate. Yeah. Do me a favor, brother. Now, uh, for everyone watching, I want to point out Jeff has no idea what's going to happen. Uh, we haven't prearranged anything. What you're about to see is happening live the same way uh, you're seeing it at home. So, Jeff, I want you to think of people in your life that you've met. This could be someone important to you. It could be somebody random. But pick one name of someone in your life that you've met. Uh, and think of that name and let me know when you have it. You, you threw me, but I, now I got a different name. So, yes, I'm, I got one. It's locked in your in. head It's right locked now. in, like, yes. Think about it. So, is, now... You were debating, so because you changed your mind, as soon as you dedicate on one, I want you to now tell us out loud the name of the person you thought of. First and last name? Uh, just the first name D is fine. Is Dave. Well, what if I told you that I have a photo of Dave in my no wallet? No way, no way. There's not a I'll no way. Now, I'll walk up to say. I know. I'm now look, in hide. my wallet, right here in my wallet, 
I have a, a photo of Dave, but let me give you a close up of this in a second. Check this out. Behind my driver's license, He's confident. you see in what? my wallet, there's oh, a Kelly, photo, but it's, 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 I, 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 it's just a bunch of junk. I, I told you it, it was Dave, but it's really just a bunch of junk. But check this out. Let's give you a close up oh, of I what it. I have. Check this out. Because if you're able to, if you <laughs> rewind, it is a picture of Dave. <laughs> D-A-V-E. Give me your blanket. Right girl. on the money. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> that, was, that, was that was incredible. My head's spinning like the exorcist. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. Out of any name in the world, I said any name of anyone in the world, good choice on, on Dave. So that's what you call too much time doing things you weren't supposed to as a child. Oh um, but the real question is, did I know in advance or was Jeff able to pick up what was in my wallet? That's the question. Oh, that's the real key. Is who's the mentalist here? I don't know. When you tell the audience I had no idea this was coming, that's most show. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, that was wait, obviously wait. He's correct. <laughs> Wayne, that was incredible. What else do you have for us? Oh my god. So uh, a lot of people want to know what mentalists do in our spare time. Like do we practice? What do we do? Uh we do a lot of mental exercises. So if you've ever watched um you know, uh, uh, people practice something you can watch. You can't practice, you can't watch me practice, but we use things like these. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, the, you know, Rubik's cubes and so on. So we, we practice mental exercises to be able to do these crazy things. But uh, for practicing with this thing for over 30 years, I found a shortcut. Yeah, check this out. All you have to do is blow on it like this. Oh my gosh. What? And that's how you solve it. Yeah, so uh, just try that at home. Go grab a Rubik's Cube, see, you know, just blow on it. And if it works, call me and I'll put you in my show. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's incredible. Is there something in your head that you click on and off? It's, it's, it's hard oh, work. His see? phone's ringing. That's it's a Tory timer. <laughs> Yeah, to get you out of any conversation yeah. with Tori. I sent it to him last night. That, that's that's the moment I felt like she was gonna take the blanket off. It's weird. So uh, it's freezing in here. My it ain't happening. All right. It's cold. It's Look, cold. my teeth are chattering. <laughs> No, you're doing well, that. No, I'm not. Look, it, either you're a great actor or it is freezing in it's there. Great. I'll warm it up with my mind. Don't worry. Uh -oh. Don't yeah. Worry. Wait, we want to thank you, too. When you were in studio, it seems like a, such a long time oh, ago. God. But you took time and showed every single person a trick. So mind-blowing. Yeah, you're amazing. We can't wait to get you back in studio, buddy. One of the original friends well, of the show. I'm shows. ready to come back once uh, once the the security will let me through the door. <laughs> I, I've, I've been having trouble. It's it's. But I'm, I'm, I'm ready to come back when you guys will have me. And it's fun reading everybody's mind in studio. You guys are wild. You're yeah. unbelievable, Wayne. Thank you so much. You can check out dates to see Wayne perform live at waynehoffman.com. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... might have been a little harder for you today. That's because of the start of daylight saving time. It's when we spring our clocks forward and gain more sunlight later in the day. But every year we hear some of the same claims pop up about daylight saving time. We went to cardiologist Dr. Pyle Coley, Dr. Nancy Behrens, system medical director for Novon Health Sleep Medicine Program, the Sleep Foundation, a study published by the American Psychological Association and a different study published by Current Biology. The first question, do you really get less sleep as we spring forward? According to the Sleep Foundation, humans and mammals are guided by circadian rhythms. Basically, it's like a clock inside our bodies that's coordinated to the daylight schedule. In order to reset each day, it must be synchronized with natural light to darkness cycles in order to ensure some good Zs. So the minute that you change, what amount of sunlight you're getting, that circadian rhythm gets disrupted. Dr. Coley says when the rhythm is interrupted, like more sunlight at night, that means less sleep. The sleep hormones that are being released or are supposed to be released when it's dark don't come out at the right time. And then the wakeful hormones, the ones that give us energy, in the mornings, those don't come out at the right time. Dr. Barron says this then creates grogginess and mood swings. A few days to a week would be typical. Some people may be affected even longer. Um, so really, 
taking care to protect your sleep time, have good sleep habits is especially important around this time. In a study published by the American Psychological Association, it found the Monday directly following daylight saving time, workers sleep on average 40 minutes less than on other days. So we can verify that, yes, most people do get less sleep when you set your clocks forward. The next question, are there more car crashes the Monday after we spring forward? We actually have found that there are more car accidents the Monday following the time change. Um, So definitely want to be careful and make sure you're alert if you're going to be driving. A study from Current Biology looked at the week of daylight saving from 1996 to 2017 and found on average more fatal accidents occur than other weeks during the year. The study found at the start of daylight saving time, fatal traffic accidents increased by 6% in the U.S. So we can verify that, yes, there are more car crashes the Monday after we spring forward. With your Verify, I'm Megan Brown. By definition, an oligarch is a member of a small group of people who have control of a country, organization, or institution, usually through a massive amount of wealth. In Russia, about 35 billionaires have profited from their association with President Vladimir Putin. They rose to power back in the 90s when the Soviet Union collapsed by buying government-run institutions and becoming multi-billionaires. As long as they remain loyal to Putin, their rich lifestyle only gets richer. But Putin's invasion of Ukraine is threatening that lifestyle. So far, sanctions from the U.S. and European Union have cost oligarchs more than $80 billion. These Russian elites own property in the U.S. and other European countries. But now, the U.S. Justice Department has launched a task force going after their assets to deal another blow to Putin's strongest allies. Welcome back to DBL. Neglected houses without repairs or maintenance quickly fall into despair. And it costs a pretty penny to bring them back to their original condition. It's time for some DBL home tips presented by American Home Shield. First, always direct rainwater away from your home's foundation. If not, you risk water flowing into your basement. Next, remove lint from your dryer and vent. Clogs can restrict airflow, which can catch fire. And lastly, cleaning your air grills. Blowing air carries dust, which can lead you cleaning more and also triggers allergies. And remember, an American Home Shield warranty plan helps cover many things homeowners insurance leaves out, like breakdowns of major components of home systems and appliances, so you can rest easy knowing you're ready for whatever breakdown strikes next. Visit ahs.com to find a plan that's right for you. That was uh, a really good read. If I was in an audition, yeah. I'd be like, nailed it. <laughs> Call your agent, like, get ready. I had, like, call, some inflection in there, and I started gaining <laughs> confidence, like, towards you. the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally I, was. I really hope this is not gross. Right? What, did you guys, were you impressed? I, I didn't even stumble once. I, I, I need somebody to back me up. Did anybody else know how often you need to clean the the, the ceiling fan blades? They get real I didn't dust. know. Get up there. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, nasty. maybe every six months. And it's like, no. no. You need to, you no need to, I didn't mm-hmm. even know. Spring clean, at least. Nothing. We're out. All right. Bye, Beebs. I mean, bye, everybody.